Morning everyone. Um, yeah, so the day's come. This is, uh, got a guy off Facebook who's 90% sure he's buying it. He hasn't seen it in person yet, but I've sent him a heap of photos. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's probably gonna go maybe this afternoon or tomorrow, just depends. Uh, he's got the money, he's got the cash ready to go. Um, he's just got to, um, anything over $10,000, you've got to ring the bank up to make sure they have that money there before you go and get it. Um, and you've got to account for it too. You've got to tell them what you're buying with it and stuff. So um, he's just waiting on that. He knows the bank has the money. He's just got to go and pick it up um, and like order it from the bank to tell him to have it ready for him when he comes in. So anyway, um, I asked him and I said, do you want me to service it or do you want to watch the service? Um, and he said, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. He kind of knows what to do. So I'm just going to do the service. I'm kind of going to do it halfway. So I'll film uh, me taking everything off that I need to take off, taking the plugs out, taking the oil out with the sucker, and then putting the new plugs back in and maybe even doing the oil as well. Um, but I, I might even just leave it half done so he can see kind of what I've done. So he knows that I've done it, but whatever. But yeah, got all the new stuff there, ready to go. It's about $100 to buy the three plugs, the filter and the oil. Um, yeah, so about 100 bucks. I don't know what a shop would charge, but it's definitely gonna be more than that. So it's probably saving 150, 150 bucks or so, 200 bucks, not sure. It depends what they charge. But I've got everything ready for him. So he's, he's taken that esky. He's taken the, um, that esky bolts onto the back there. He's taken the, all the vests, the cover. It's got a cover for the jet ski there, so I've got to remember to give him that. I'll just leave it there for now until I know 100% he's coming, and then I'll put it here. But uh, there are the tubs out of it, and then that's all the extra, uh, the wash, engine flush, um, dock bumpers, another vest, uh, locks to lock the trailer to the car. That's a wheel clamp, so if you're going to leave it outside, you can clamp the wheel up. Uh, that that foam there it goes on the back and then the esky sits on top and then makes the esky level just so the esky's not on a massive lane. Um, oh, I've got to take, I've emptied, I've emptied this tub, there wasn't a lot in there. Yeah, I've just got to empty, empty this as well, unless you want some sun cream, but it probably doesn't. Um, yeah, so sad to see it go, it was good fun. But um, yeah, I, I've kind of... I've kind of just, I've been selling, um, I haven't showed what I've sold, but I've sold some scooters, a bike, uh, all my homebrew stuff that I used to do, make my own homebrew, that's all gone. Uh, a lot of remote control plane stuff, like I've got a guy coming on the weekend to pick them two up, um, and I've only got two left after that, I've sold heaps of other stuff, plus I had drawers of old remote control plane stuff, that's all gone. Um, this will go, so my white wagon will come and sleep in here now. Um, so I'll do a big video on that. I'm gonna give it a, a when I bought it, I did it, gave it a really nice polish and wax and everything. And I haven't, I've kind of done it since, but not really, because it sleeps outside, there's no point. So when that comes back in here, um, I'm gonna give it a full on makeover, uh, good cut and polish, um, wicked wax, uh, probably ceramic coat first, or graphene, I've got, I've got the graphene, deep, uh, graphene stuff. Um, then a really nice wax after a couple of days, let the, wax, let the graphene dry nice, go hard and then put a nice wax over the top. I'm going to do all the black plastic so it comes up like this because on that car it's all faded. Um, I was cleaning out this cupboard the other day, the detail, detailing cupboard. Oh, it's right at the back but it's uh, the black box it's called um, from a company called Bowden's Own, an Australian company. Um, and it's probably, the, I've used a lot of the the gels and creams that you rub on that black stuff and yeah it looks good for a couple of days but then it fades again but that stuff is you gotta wear gloves it's like a dye and um, it lasts for years like it, it does a really good job um, so yeah gonna do all the black plastics because they're starting to fade on it because it's just outside all the time so yeah so that car will get a get a nice detail once this thing goes hopefully it goes this weekend but yeah so here we go but anyway, this video is going to be about giving this a service, so it's not very hard. The only special bit of equipment you need is a is a pump action sucker or one that connects up. I don't know why I bought that because I've got I've got compressed air in here from the shed, and you can buy the compressed air ones that you you can just press a thing and it uses compressed air to create a vacuum to suck the oil out. I don't know why I bought that, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so you just need that, and you need just a I think it's a ten mil something like that. 
to undo these coil packs. Everything's really sticky because I just stayed, sprayed that stuff over it, so it's not going to be fun getting those because the spark plugs are under here. So it's only got three, it's only three cylinder. So take them out, take your oil filter off, clean the mess up that that leaves. And then that yellow cap down there, if you can see it, I'll have to get some more light down here, but um, yeah, you suck that out. Um, you suck, uh, I think there was somewhere else actually. Um, yeah, anyway, you put the suction down that yellow tube, yellow thing there, and that'll suck most of it out. Might have been where the oil filter is. I think you gotta suck out there, but I think there was, oh, here as well. I think this cap comes off, yeah. I think that, so that's where you, yeah. Geez, I can't remember now. I might have to go and watch the video because this was about two years ago I did this. Um, I'm going to go and watch the video just to refresh my memory because I know I know there's a video on YouTube. This American guy does it, so I'm going to go yeah refresh my memory before I stuff something up. But I'm pretty sure there was two two spots you've got to suck the oil out, and it, I think it was that one, and then the yellow one goes right down into the crankcase. This is for the rocker cover here, so yeah, I think it was there, but it might even be. The oil filter and the yellow case, but yeah, can't remember. All right, another thing I've got to do. I've got a, um, I've got a uh, C Tech battery charger, and I want to take that off, that that lead off, which connects to the battery. You probably can't see; it's really dark in there. Uh, yeah, I want to take that off so that way, because uh, I need it. I'm going to need it for my new car because oh, I've got another one. This 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 thing's on a C Tech as well at the moment, but um, the. the the, char the charger for this was probably going to when because this car's going as well. If you haven't watched any of my other videos, uh, it's a Tirana. It's a <coughs> I won't uncover it, but yeah, it's a it's a V8 Tirana. So that's going. I'm selling that. That charger will probably go with it. There's going to be a whole heap of stuff that goes with this. I've got a spare dash, spare window. I've got a spare bonnet as well. Um, it's at my folks' place, so that's all going to go with the car. Um, and I've ordered a. Nissan Z, brand new one, 2024 Nissan Z, but that's not going to be here for months. Probably lucky to get it even this year, I reckon. So um, yeah, that's going to go. That goes. Wagon goes. I think the wagon's going to go on this side because it's longer than this new car. The the Nissan that is actually like 200 mil shorter, so it's 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 about up to here. That's about 200 mil. So it's shorter than this car. So I think it might make more sense to put the Nissan on this side because that's where the door to the house is. Um, I know I'm going to be walking past it more, more opportunities to scratch it. So I might have to figure something out so that doesn't happen. But if I put the wagon here, you're not going to have a lot of room. The wagon's going to come to, yeah, it's, it's a lot longer than this car. So I'm a bit pressed for space. So I think it would be better if the Nissan was here and then the wagon can take up as much. I don't really use that door very often. So yeah, and the wagon can take up as much room as it needs here. But yeah, that's enough thinking. Let's get some doing done. I'll go and watch this video um, and just make sure I'm doing this correctly and then I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm kind of watching the video and, and doing this at the same time. Just so I don't have to remember everything. I'll just keep going back to the video. I just paused it. Uh, tip number one, you can see the oil filter there. I just whacked a big hole in it um, with a screwdriver and a hammer. So he said to do that. That way you vent, um, well, you drop the pressure in the oil filter and it starts draining back from now so that way when you um, unscrew the oil filter it, it doesn't make a mess everywhere um, that may look like oil on the engine but it's not it's that spray that uh, anti rust anti corrosion spray and then the other thing was so we're going to be extracting out of that yellow um, the yellow oil checker place there we're going to be sucking out of there and also out of yeah, this pipe here, this pipe has to come off. Um, so you just got to grip that with some pliers and then down. Now that doesn't lead anywhere. That pipe, I think, is for this reason because you can see it's clipped to here, but it doesn't go anywhere. So it's just there for this exact reason. Um, apparently, this hose goes right down to the bottom of the crankcase. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that and through the filler as well. I'm pretty sure that's the filler. Hopefully, I've got a funnel long enough. Um, so I'll get started on that and when I'm halfway through I'll show you while the oil's sucking out I'll then undo the coil packs two bolts for each that one and we'll get them undone So the oil's just made a bit of a noise saying that it's um, It's uh, drained as much as it can from that location. So I'll pump the, um, 
the suction pump back up now and, we'll, we'll, and then we'll change location. I'm just putting the new plugs in. Um, so you always want to start them by hand uh, and don't use a rattle gun. So I've got them as tight as you can by hand um, and then use a uh, one of these things, a ratchet, to uh, one hand, there we go. Uh, tighten it back up because if you use a rattle gun, you're probably not going to get it out again. Um, I'll do that later when I've got two hands free. Um, these are the old plugs. Uh, very good. Hardly any soot on them. Still white in the middle there on the insulator. So I'll keep them and that way I can show the guy that she's running sweet as. Um, you probably you probably get away with not doing your plug so often as well. Um, if you're a wave jumper and you're rolling your ski in salt water and you're getting salt water like down in these holes, uh, they are sealed but you're going to get water down there if you're going to do that, then probably yeah, change them every 20 hours or whatever or you'll want at least once a year. Um, otherwise you'll get corrosion down there and then you're not getting the plug out. But I'd, I've never rolled this. This has never never been wet in here apart from me rinsing the sides. I don't, I don't ever wet the motor. Um, so yeah, it's probably could have left the plugs in and just do the oil but it doesn't matter for what it's worth. They're only... I think they're only about eight bucks each, these plugs, so they're cheap, might as well change them, and then everyone's happy. Um, so I'll even keep, I'm going to keep him a box, um, that way he's got the, I think the price, was, yeah, eight, 865, uh, that way he's got the number, the part number for the uh, spark plugs, and I'll even do the same for the filter, I think I saw that, there we go, so that's the part number for the filter, and part number for the uh, spark plug and Cully's Motorcycle Centre, it's a Yamaha dealer, that's where I get everything from just around the corner from me and that's the oil uh, I use. Um, I think I went to Cully's and I just give them this, um, the, the, num the hull number, HIN, H hull identification number and they type that in and it spits out what you need and then they just go out the back and get it. But anyway, if you want to order it online, if this new fellow wants to order it online then you can just search for that part number. Um, I think that's what we're in it, because I remember when I went to buy them, yeah, CR9EB, and that's what these are, CR9EB, yeah, I remember when to buy them and there was a confusion about something, but he said these are the ones, but yeah, that's the pipe, so that's off, I've sucked out as much oil as I can from there, the filter is still on, so I haven't done that yet, and now I'm going to put it to where that yellow cap was, and we'll see how much oil we get out of that, while that's draining oil, then I'll do the, um, I'll just tighten up the three spark plugs, and put the coil packs back on. Okay, you got the filter off, had to use, uh, this one wouldn't work, it was too big, so had to use that one. That one uh, cinches up a bit nicer. Uh, this, this pipe, I suppose, can go back on because we're done with that. And then, uh, pliers. Done, so that's ready for next time. So, uh, plugs are in, they're not tight. I've got the oil filter off, so you just want to make sure, run your finger around that ceiling surface there. I'll make sure there's no, um, no, no bits of sand, or not that there's going to be sand in there, but yeah, just make sure it's nice. Uh, let me just unwrap this oil filter. So it looks like it already comes greased. It's already got a bit of grease there. Um, if that O-ring is dry, uh, definitely chuck some old oil, but I can, there's, there's a heap of grease on that, so that's all good. So Plus there's going to be a bit of oil on that mating, or oh, let's, let's just put some. There you go. Doesn't matter if there's a bit there. Like that. Screw it on. Yep, all good. So... Uh, you also want to make sure you clean nicely around it so that way there's no old oil. Um, that way when you start it, if you see oil near the, near the oil filter, you know it's because something's not sitting right. But if you leave a whole heap of the old oil there and then start it, you don't know if that's old oil or new oil and you, you don't know if you've done the job properly. So I'll just clean up nicely around because once this gets oil pressure, it's a different story. Um, again, shouldn't shouldn't use a tool to tighten it up, but I'm gonna, or well, maybe this rag might be all right here. It's just really oily and I can't grip it. Nah, that's okay. Yep, yeah, cool. That's pretty tight. 
Um, that's tight enough. So let me have a look. Oh, I don't trust it. Yeah, see, I'm glad I did that. You just got a little bit more out of it. That's that's way tight enough. I'm not I'm not even hanging off it. I'm just using the leverage a little bit. So all good. Okay. So oil filters on. This hose is back on. This is still sucking oil. As you can see, yep. Should be able to see it flowing. So I'll just pump her up a bit more. Works good, but it's slow. I don't know how much faster, a, um, you know, one running off the um, off the air, compressed air would be. But yeah, I mean, it works. I don't know how much oil's in it. Let's have a look. Should, should be uh, three liters at the moment. We should be getting close to four. I think just under. I think it takes just under four liters, but. Yeah, I might actually look it up so I know exactly how much to put back in and don't have to muck around too much with starting it and checking the dipstick and everything. So, um, all right, before I forget, that's why I left the spanner, the wrench there, ratchet, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to tighten these up before I forget and put the, put the coil packs back on. Okay, we're looking good. Um, glad we're almost finished. It's getting quite hot. It's going to be 40 degrees today, 41 tomorrow. So, yeah, it's going to be a uh, stinker. Um, you can see there, exactly four litres came out, so it's exactly four litres in that bottle, so I'm not even going to, I'm just going to fill it up and use the whole thing. I just finished watching the video, uh, he said put a little bit down down in here just so that's not dry, uh, the top end of the motor, and then the rest goes in to where your dipstick goes. I uh, got that, January 24, 79.4 hours, that's when it's been serviced, which is today, January 24. And uh, yeah, 79 hours, so that's all good. Spark plugs all tight, coil packs back on, um, and I just took that lead off. That was harder than servicing it. That's um, that was a real pain to get around that corner and kind of balance right where you need to stand is where the wheel is, and then if you stand over here too far away, it was a pain. But anyway, uh, got this ready to go. So I'll just uh, yeah, a couple hundred mils in there, and then well maybe a liter in there, and then three liters down the bottom. Um, I cleaned up the battery terminals with contact and circuit board cleaner, so that's all good. So I'll get the torch, you can kind of see. Oh, here it is. So yeah, we're all sweet down there. Um, I just wanted my... Uh, so this, this thing that's loose is a battery vent. Um, it's to vent your battery if you have that type of battery that needs venting, but that is, that's a sealed battery, you don't need it. So all good. Um, the big wires are for the jet ski, those little wires. Uh, to run the um, fish finder, so that's that's why they're there, if you're wondering. But otherwise, we're looking good. Everything else looks really sweet in here. Um, yeah, battery terminals tight and clean. Oil filters back on. Uh, this pipe is back on. The sucker for the crankcase, core pack, spark plugs tight. Uh, the only thing that is not on is the dipstick, and that is because I need to put oil in there. But yeah, I want to keep that, so that's going to go on my new car. Um, so I'll probably keep that over here. I'm probably going to lose it, but <clears throat> if I hang it kind of there, we'll see if it's still there in a year. Or six to eight months, as I've been told. But we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll chuck some all in. I'll let you know how we go after that. All right, job done. That was easy. Took me about an hour, but that was including filming, going backwards and forwards, watching the video, and taking that, um, that lead off. Uh, if you'd done it before and you're not doing any of that stuff, it'd be easy 40 minutes. Wouldn't take very long at all. And that's, if you're quick doing it, you're probably going to have time waiting for the oil if you've got one of those stupid things, because um, it's pretty slow. So you, you'll probably change the spark plugs and the oil filter quicker than how long that takes to suck the four litres of oil out. So, uh, yeah. But um, other than that, all went easy. Um, I didn't put four litres back in because I think I'm pretty sure I overfilled it uh, last time. So I put about a litre in and then, problem, I don't know, 2.8 litres down the, where the yellow is. And um, it was full to the brim. I could barely close that um, dipstick up. and then, But that's because the filter's empty. So then I started it, let it run for 30 seconds or so. Fill the filter up, fill all the oil lines up and everything where needed oil. Um, 
checked it and it was bang on it was right up the top of the fill mark uh, not halfway right up the top so it's probably still got a little bit too much in there but um, yeah uh, we'll just leave it at that that'll be fine I've never had dramas with it and I'm pretty sure it was overfilled last time and I never had problems I check it before I go out and I check it when I come back after I've cleaned it all down so um, yeah it's never it never uses oil so yeah all good so yeah there's a little bit left in there for the new owner um, chuck it out do whatever but you'll never between servicing I've never topped it up it's never used oil so it's fine so he can just have it and at least he's got the bottle then and he knows what he what he needs but otherwise uh, I'm gonna keep those spark plugs for him as well so all good but yeah otherwise she's sweet she's ready to go I feel like taking it out now but he might be coming this afternoon so then I won't be here but um, yeah all good um, I had my last ride my last ride was actually the ride when um, I filmed it so if you go back a couple months that was my last ride on this when I went on my own out to the ocean from the Narrows Bridge in the city on the river all the way through the rich areas of Perth there where all the really nice houses are out past Fremantle and then out a little bit in the ocean and then back again so I'm glad I did it that was um, that was a good ride that and that's going to be probably my last ride as long as this guy shows up today or tomorrow um, I was going to take it out this weekend but it's going to be super hot I, I really don't want to be in the sun when it's uh, 40 degrees plus so it's not happening um, so yeah, yeah, so if it, if it sells within the next week, I probably won't get to use it. If I've still got it the weekend after this coming weekend, today's Friday, so Saturday, Sunday, if I've still got it next Saturday and Sunday, maybe I might take it out, but probably not. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, it's all clean, it's all service, so yeah, might as well just leave it, but see what happens. Anyway, cheers for watching. Um, a fairly long-winded way of doing it, but... Uh, just with all the babbling and stuff like that, but yeah, that's it's easy anyone can do it and you save yourself a heap of money in the long run as well um, Plus you'll do it more often Like I said, you don't have to change the spark plugs every time as long as you change the oil at least once a year Unless you're using it heaps you might have to do it twice a year But yeah, as long as you change it at least once a year just the oil and then every other year to change the spark plugs and the oil and filter Yeah, you'll be sweet. These things will last forever Japanese motor, you know no, no worries at all. So, uh, yeah, I won't get started on the Sea Do uh, Yamaha debate, but yeah, that's why I've got a Yamaha. But anyway, all good. Catch us later. See you later.